Who will guard the guards themselves? We may become a victim of a manipulation by members of our own people, our own group, those we are special. I do not have a few answers on the special organization dilemma, except for the fact that we believe that we do good. Except for that we should work with people who have high moral standards. I'm aware of the most difficult task to fulfill, and maybe you can help me answer this, this dilemma. But to have the long story short, the role of media, which people view, is to sell identity based on European values. First, to those who are keen to positively answer to it, so they can share it among their friends and followers, and thus grow in our target. Whenever it's possible, when we require to be invested. And if we want to strengthen the unity of power, we need to show the European Union that we must expand the sphere of this value. In other words, it should not operate with the inherently colonial notion of Eastern Europe, or even New Eastern Europe, but rather show that there is one some. Central Europe or in 
issue of a very insurance amount. And we should point this out and stand out and we should stress it in our communication. Okay, I will come back and will return to the special problem because my duty is to fulfill uh, the title of the idea of uh, uh, that discussion. Uh, and I think uh, we, we, we should invite uh, Mr. Alexander Kolyanki to open our discussion, ask him about his comments, and uh, about to our discussion after the presentation made by his book. Uh, and I think that we will find a place for you here. Okay? Okay. It's okay. Uh, you know, this is a very good example of uh, insertion of information is not manipulation of information. So, you know, when I was discussing with the organizers of the conference, what is the matter of here? They say that, uh, okay, we will not have visual this event, uh, this event but uh, you know, you just take, take it part in the, uh, this uh, discussion. Yeah. So, <laughs> I actually learned that I'm a visual discipline. <laughs> 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 just, you know, half an hour, you know. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you have your interpretation. No, no problem, no problem. Uh, in fact, in fact, if you don't mind, I would like to change uh, the role from active business to just uh, the, mm, the person who is taking the next part of the discussion and by putting a uh, question which really affects me, which really interests me. And I, wish, uh, and I do know that uh, the audience, uh, to some extent, to some, some part, share my, my interest. So, and my first question is for the first presenter. As far as I understand, the major goal of this organization is a sort of a technical support of um, Russian internet society who is aiming to the direction which is called by, you know, promotion of democracy, promotion of rights of people, promotion of free speech, or withstanding the propaganda. So, could you say a couple of, you know, just a couple of words? For better understanding what sort of real health, everyday health, in the meaning of software or algorithms or whatever, could you present to people in Russia, mostly in Russia, to 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 this Thank you very much. Well, uh, we see our like when we when we plan our impact and our outcomes, our main impact is the uh, transformation of civil society. And civil society does not only include human rights for a democracy movement, it actually includes all kinds of organizations and initiatives that empower citizens. And our main impact is uh, like much more stronger civil society. The aim that we haven't yet uh, achieved uh, and uh, the overall impact comes uh, as um, some of three outcomes which are increased efficiency with the help of technology, uh, much better interconnectedness, and we see a very particular value in the interconnectedness of civil society actors both inside one country as well as their interconnectedness with uh, their colleagues abroad, if Poland included, Ukraine, Belarus included, with supported uh, personal democracy forums that uh, took place in Warsaw, bringing people actually here. We see a lot of uh, importance in this, and we think that only interconnectedness and personal ties between the activists, between people who actually have trust, and who's, because in, in the uh, civil society organizations, trust and their reputation is of great importance. So if we have enough connections between people who have trust and whom people trust, even they are not you know, high level politicians and are not politicians, which is important because politicians fight for power, civil society people fight for values. Uh, I believe that's uh, increasingly, incredibly important uh, distinction. Uh, and the last thing is actually the competence. The competence and, uh, uh, of using new technology.
technologies that appear every time, every day. Uh, we're listening now that the bio is the new tag. So in 10 years, the digital stuff with, with that seems new to us will be outdated. It will become nothing. Kids, 12-year-old kids, will be doing anything digital much better. But they will be also doing bio stuff level, uh, bio stuff better. Uh, and also when it comes to cognitive science, the neuroscience that will affect our societies and uh, decision making uh, processes a lot. It will change the society a lot and we need to keep up with that. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Very good question, actually, and thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, starting, starting with the RT, it's, uh, I'm very happy that you, uh, this government, you know, get uh, broadcast and afraid of your afraid of liberty. You know, it was created in 1954, in Cold War times. It was created by CIA, you know, to break all the all this, you know, information on the wall, Berlin Wall, after. You know, and um, in many countries of the European Union, they became, they became democracies. Radio of Europe, Radio Liberty was uh, cut off, but in most of the countries it still broadcast. And now, Radio of Europe this year, it, get, it got from uh, it got from Congress of the US the biggest budget since 1919. So we can tell that somehow, all for a time, is coming back. And we can see that the US government just put the focus on the media as a profile, you know, of this war, of this hybrid war that's happening now. Everything uh, in Belarus started like Radio Liberation, it was a first name for everything. Uh, that was the first name, yes. And uh, it's interesting that its mission is gone and its path practically didn't uh, change. The main, uh, as we tell, you know, the main, um, the best propaganda is truth, you know, that's what we do. And uh, if uh, 30 years ago, my father who started, who was one of the founders of the Soviet movement uh, in 1980, you know, the then Radio Liberty was like the main supporter for their movement, and the possibility to find new people and new people joining us. Now, RFC, 
no place, uh, similar role, but on absolutely other platforms, social networks. I think that now, for today, and we can tell not only about therapy, but also about radio app, there, which we're discussing for one year, in radio for the other, build some, that the most important is present in UBB and social networks. Because in reality, satellite TV channel for short wave broadcasting, it doesn't play a role for uh, for core of the society. I mean, the mobilized uh, whole society groups able to mobile for mobilizing, you know. And NRC helps to spread the message. We have now um, three main platforms: NRC, similar to all independent media broadcasting, uh, broadcasting in the European Union. We have uh, satellite broadcasting, the same as Bill Sass TV, we have TV satellite broadcasting. We have short wave and middle wave broadcasting, but I think it doesn't play the same role as it was 30 years ago. Because uh, who uh, in, this audience, in this room, who has short wave uh, receiver? You know? I think nobody. So it's, uh, it, it's more important for uh, village people, people for province uh, who don't have internet. And first, and the most important, and I see, is website and social network. So we have um, the biggest therapy, um, the biggest groups in Facebook and contact. And why I uh, put focus on contact? Because uh, many people in European Union underestimate our contact accessibility. In Belarus, 30% of the population uses contact every day. They use it for entertainment. And what we do with contact therapy, maybe it's not serious for so serious media therapy, we put fun pictures with uh, a serious text. And that's the idea. We create data of fun pictures, viral videos, 30 seconds, you know, to illustrate very serious analytical text reports, discussions, shows, you know. And that's the big it has the biggest if you see two or three hundred comments under, you know, under important topics with some picture, you know, it shows that it works. Generally, we have the reach not so, not so big. But in total, all the lawyers and media now, they uh, have the same, uh, uh, yeah, they merge, you know. Uh, for example, RFC aggregate, 10 materials from other sites. Uh, Nationally, we are getting about 50 materials from other, from other sites. So, uh, people speak about media, we shouldn't use but just audience of RT, audience of Dubai, audience of European reporters. We tell, we should tell, and we should use the word reach. What is your reach? What is our reach? I know that RT monthly, you know, reach is like 10 million, you know, and million uh, Charter 97 is like 100 million. But in general, we spread the same news, we spread the same message. Uh, I'd like to show you just from the experience. Let's first try to compare the impact of the radio liberty in the Russian service on Russian society and the radio liberty in the Russian service on the Russian service on the information land. So, can it somehow compare the effect of the radio Russian service was very effective uh, when they had uh, railroad transfers inside of Russia. It was working very effective. If we speak about internet, uh, RFC, Russian service, can compete with Ekamas, with some Russian uh, popular independent websites, but, you know, but of course it is maybe not so essential, you know, because uh, the problem in Russia is not that they, uh, that the society doesn't have access to that. The problem they do not want to read this news. In Belarus, we have a bit different situation. People really need this information. They want to get this information, and they find this information. That's probably a reason why now in Belarus is better situation than in Russia, because in Russia this shows many the society zombies and not interested in anything. But the most important problem in Belarus is that I mark you are not able to promote your media. I will show you an example. How to promote uh, the media using Jewish. 
if you want to if you want to break if you want to break in you know, propaganda limitations restrictions, you have to find a new uh, possibility to move. What we did one year ago was a radio failure. In Belarus you are not we are illegal, absolutely illegal. We cannot put any advertisement, any good words, any newspaper, you know, ads. What we did, we published about fifty thousand plastic ads with the slogan freedom to ice hockey players. It was before ice hockey world ice hockey championship, you know. And we take this plastic bag and this should be made for free. We go to some city to me. And what happened? We go to Kamarovsky River in the downtown of Minsk. Hundreds of bottles that surrounded us. Thank you, this plastic bag for distribution. Still now you can see the plastic bag in you know, many places. And the main idea is that freedom, you know, it's, it's like uh, in English, they like have word, you know, freedom, liberty. If you use this word, you are living opposition at this. But here, with another very important role, I saw the players. It's like a religion for Lukashenko. We unite these two, freedom or liberty, to ice hockey players. And this policy, by the way, doesn't know how to react. But the message is clear, Swaboda.org, the address of our website. And this is an example of how uh, a creative approach can break limitation, restrictions, and uh, uh, repression. And another example about trends. Sorry for uh, it's t shirt. Uh, we invented this t-shirt one year ago. During one uh, during one day, I just made a design of this t-shirt. Uh, it's like Bushwank. It's like a broad shirt. Like I, I think uh, everybody should know. It's like national national clothes. But what we did, thank for Radio for Europe printing this t-shirt. Uh, we printed first 200, 500,000. Now we distribute about 20,000 these t-shirts, and you can see. Uh, many different kinds of these t-shirts. But the most important, we in the truth, we have to say, we uh, fulfilled these t-shirts with a, a message. Who wear these t-shirts? It means that you are for freedom, you are for changes, you are for the you know? We just distribute this message. We are thank ice hockey players, basketball players, politicians and these t-shirts, you know. And this became a national trend, you know. But for most part, it's very easy. So that's a way how to reach people, you know. We uh, merge uh, as a media with a civil society campaign that it works out. Uh, and that can be a soft power, you know. Finding new ways, finding new platforms, using them in creative way, you know, without violence, with positive message, with a focus on national identity. It's a soft power, but effective power for countries like Ukraine, like Belarus, like Moldova, and everybody who is endangered, endangered by Russian uh, Putin, Kremlin, uh, 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 to fulfill, to support uh, national identity, because national identity is the best weapon, best armor, you know, for Russia. If we feel Belarusian, it means that we are not in Russia.
how really we can organize our The problem is that internet now is starting to be a great danger for the open society because uh, uh, Putin's drawing is so well organized, organized that it could influence Western society in this hybrid war. And what is much more important, not influence, if it's influence, it associated not only with news and information, it is disrupting the main structure of a free discourse. It's the main matter. It makes a free discussion impossible. But it provokes very deep disorientation. And I should say that 